Warning, Kingdom Death contains mature content, be it in its story themes and or its uh, images. Uh, while these videos may, while videos involving Kingdom Death Monster may not contain in specifically mature content in them, the game does, and thus if these videos generate interest for it, you will, you've been warned that that is what it will lead to. If this does not bother you, please enjoy the video. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to this painting and assembly video for Kingdom Death Monsters The Butcher. The first nemesis monster for the core game and the third monster one would fight. The Butcher is honestly looks like a humanoid character like most of the nemesis so you could think it's a normal survivor and it may have been but Regardless, the reason I'm saying that is the model here is mainly a body. It is larger than the survivors, and it is the same size base that you would have seen for the white lion and, and the screaming antelope, as well as every other monster with the core game except the phoenix. This is the 2x2 two two space, and here I'm gluing together the shoulder piece, um, drive fitting a lot of stuff. This back piece was really annoying. I'll get to that more later. Like, not that part right there. No, that was pretty easy. I like so easy. I double checked it, which is why it came off for a bit. Not like after I was gluing it. Uh, the arms were also a little annoying, um, and so was this goddamn head, which is actually three pieces because the head itself and majority of the helmet is one, but the lower jawbone and the upper jawbone of the helmet are two separate pieces, as you just saw. The legs fit on kind of funny. Uh, but most of their funniness is uh, obscured by the cloak and every and other parts of the model. Like, honestly, this model could be done without the cloak if you wanted to gap in the hole in the back, but I wouldn't recommend it. And the reason I say that the arms are screwy, as I now get to them in the video, um, is really they just stay at the funniest of angles. Um, I had more trouble with the hands... Um, feet uh, sorry for the back and forth that the, uh, one of the other models is called the hand and i don't think i ended up did, doing that right i'll cover that then but i just kind of dealt with it so here you can see that there's a giant gap between the body and the cloak um that's for future reference supposed to fit very snugly uh, against the uh, against each other i do actually end up tearing it off which doesn't end up being too hard because it was only glued by that one spot which is all you should need to glue it by uh shoulders if you want to you know back up on, uh, have a backup uh point of contact and reattach it very firmly i don't remember if i ended up shaving the thing uh, the nub that's actually on the cloak itself down so there's the fully assembled model you know me making sure that it fits on the base which it's not staying and me and that's the moment that i'm realizing something is wrong with the cloak right there um but here it is entirely double cleavers and everything so the model here is already partially painted because honestly i'm getting to the point where i want to waste less of your time like you the viewer with any of this painting uh where it's just large portions especially if it's in this case i realized i should have primed the model black um i'm gonna be trying to cut out the face paintings as well as long as there's something simple uh at least for the later models in a game series like the first one you'll see me leave in um especially with something like dark souls where the base actually somewhat matters uh and of course like the gold smoke knight from this game i'll be leaving in but that's because it has a customized base so on to what i'm actually doing though i'm painting the actual bone uh of the models and this is pretty much any part that looks like well bone um this is a color that i've reliably used for painting as a base coat of bone for a very long time uh it's it, um actually referred to as a bone color and it's just always worked um i remember when i first ran out of it i got really worried because they had renamed it and i couldn't find it exactly but regardless uh so this ends up being the helm um, the helmet majority of the shoulder piece uh many of the lanterns are made up of bones uh the little white piece you saw a second ago on his knee and the bones making up the spines of the cleavers um most of this was pretty easy to do the 
Lanterns themselves, I think I missed a couple or accidentally painted some that I shouldn't have because it's really hard to tell the difference between these. Oh, yeah, and I forgot there's actually some skulls on the back, too. Uh, just not like, hey, this makes up part of a lantern like this one. Uh, just, hey, here's a couple skulls on here because this guy is a sicko. Um, like, literally, his picture in the book is just him with three dead bodies that don't even look like they're ruined at all except for the fact he's clearly skinned their faces off and is stretching them over lanterns because yeah most of his lanterns are covered with stretched faces and so is his belt his belt buckle is a stretched face basically like that white space in the middle of his waist so here i'm trying different things with the uh how to actually paint the bones on the cleaver um, first you saw me doing it very carefully, then you saw me trying to just dry brush it on, which didn't work, and I did went back to very carefully. I'll, I actually end up having to clean it up later. Speaking of cleaning up, this model ends up having a lot of moments in which I have to clean it. And the paint job, like, this model has, per space, probably so far the most touch-up work I've had to do. Speaking of which, here's the faceplate which I originally was going with bronze as the base coat, trying to get something more of a rustic look. And honestly, it didn't work. Like, I didn't realize it till afterwards, but I end up going with some very dead flesh look, and I'm still trying to get it like a petrified wood is what I want it to look like in the end. So the lanterns themselves, I'm painting orange, um, as honestly, his lanterns didn't seem too bright, in any of the artwork compared to every other model. I still don't know what I'm going to do with the Watcher, as I'm currently in the progress of that right now. Um, but most everything else I've been doing yellow. I know I did the Hand and the Kingsman's Lanterns yellow, and I have yet to work on the Survivors. Um, they've just been assembled, and that's it. I care more about getting the monsters done. So I end up doing this on literally all of them. This is one of the slowest painstaking parts of the entire model, not counting the cloak itself, which honestly ends up me being just, why did I even paint this black? Um, as in, I wasted a lot of time on it, but you'll see what I mean later. Um, this in effect is just pretty simple. Like right now I'm just painting right over the flesh stretched faces and everything. I'm just ignoring them. I get to that later. Um, which speaking of, I end up using the wrong color on them. It comes out looking pretty decent still, but I didn't realize where that tone of flesh that I was looking for had gone. And that was because it was in a bottle of a different company and it's the only one that I ha uh, only one of two that I have of that company I had forgotten um I really don't like how they use a lot of different things like the ones that I have the hardest time getting getting are the ones from the company that I prefer be only because of the shape of their pot um oh and here it is yeah uh, I end up using a I believe a flesh tone a very tan one either that or I'm using the well the literal tan color and then here's me painstakingly painting the faces. The reason this is painstaking is not, oh look, I'm making a mistake here and there. Again, I refer to my first time through painting model, uh, painting a model as a slop base coat. I'm being sloppy, not as sloppy as I can be. I'm just not really caring if I make mistakes and fixing them up later, so that I can actually get some progress done. Worst case scenario, if it goes on the table, it will still have some semblance, um, because this paint and was for some reason very runny no matter what I did like I would have had to leave it out for quite a while and I'd be worrying about if I let it dry up too much but again I go through all the flesh here painting every single face except obviously his because you can't see it and yes double coating the one on his waist because it looked pretty much white the first time through this is supposed I was going for a leathery flesh look so that it ended up, you know, looking like dried out stretched faces, not freshly stretched faces. So, here's the part that, yeah, now you get to see what I mean by the cloak. Uh, not only was it a pain in the ass to paint this on the inside, which if you think you're going to have a problem with, I recommend either prying it off and gluing it back on later, or not gluing it on until after it's painted. Personally, I still like fully assembling my models beforehand, a, I feel that they're more usable, and B, I don't have to deal with glue residue or mismatch paint coats later. 
after gluing them. Um, ends up being a lot less fixing work, and you might miss glue something after painting, but that's not the point. So, yeah, I end up uh, having to do this whole thing, and I, I end up speeding this up a little bit faster than the rest of uh, the video, because this is just a pain. But as you can see, uh, it's now starting to show the shapes of other things. The lanterns are becoming more predominant, uh, and there, you can see the chains and, like, ch uh, like charms and tokens hanging from his cloak and various other things uh but this color ends up needing to be used as you can see on the arm and a couple other places uh that are pretty much this is what i just end up using for the fur and i will end up dry brushing it i still find it a little odd as i said in the screaming antelope video how much i've ended up having to use brown on these models uh, be it the darker brown that you see here or the tan that I end up using for the highlight later and I may have used for the mask itself. I honestly can't remember. Um, but yeah, it's like really just lots of brown, lots of brown. I really look at this and I'm just like, this looks like it would be screaming antelope fur uh, and not white lion because the white lion has the tendency to be smoother when it's used on things ex unless they're actually trying to make it look like a, ma a mane such as the white lion armor set or the actual items to go with it really but for example uh the kingsman not the kingsman the hand is clearly using bits from every other monster or that's huntable and the more predominant one is the white lion because he has a coat that is definitely knitted wool fur or something like that and it's just very nice but again we're here for the butcher almost done with this brown here i'm i unfortunately had some trouble keeping him in frame every now and then i think i finally which means three models later uh from this one figured out how to keep things in frame while painting it's a little difficult because, again, the rig starts to get in my way. So, now I'm going on to the metallic, or the darker metallic, which ends up being majority of what's left of the model. Uh, everything pretty much other than the chain mail and chains, or uh, the chain mail itself, both on the body and on uh, in between the legs. This covers, the, uh, this is to be used, as you can see, on the plate mail itself, the uh, edge of the blades, various the various tools on his belt like what i'm doing now uh his boots uh which i don't know if you caught earlier i know i didn't mention it uh his feet are two pieces each they're split right down the middle just the feet themselves not the legs and i just found it really odd sometimes the way they cast these models like physically cast them is just so confusing like again i will never get over the fact that some of the models, some of the female models, their breasts, not individual, the pair of breasts are a separate piece from the body or the sci-fi white speaker. Her left thumb is a separate piece. I don't know if I'll ever get around to making a video for that. I did get re uh, the assembly recorded, but I have not worked on painting the video as that was a model that I got around the time before the core game came in, and I have not assembled any or painted any of the promo models since the core game has got in. I, in fact, I haven't worked on pretty much anything else I've painting-wise. Um, I'd have a lot more done, but I've been in a bit of a rut. Say la vie. So, here I am doing the boots, and as I said earlier, I was I would use this for the blades themselves, which you can see I've done. I feel a little odd on the contrast, but I was kind of going for that, um, like, a dark blade uh, katana, the ones that are still charred from the process of, um, well, heating them and folding them and everything, and, you know then are um, sharpened to the actual blade itself and the shine. It's just dark to begin with. Or, sorry, that's not what it is. I'm an idiot. I know the full process of making a katana. It's the 
coating that goes on the outside before it's heat treated. I'm thinking actually hammering the blade into shape he originally. So I move on to a gray. Uh, this is, I believe, my darkest gray. I can't remember or tell really. It's either that or my mid-range gray. And I'm using this for the actual cloth on, yeah, it, it has to be my mid-range gray because I use this for this uh, all the scraps of cloth that, like the ones on the axes or cleavers and things like that. Um, It'll be more clear once the base is painted because I always use the darkest gray for the base. And then uh, if this is the mid-range gray, I use that for the highlight. But this is pretty much his pants, a strap on his arm, and then the straps that are kind of like Nint uh, Nintendo product uh, straps to keep you from throwing them by accident. Um just attached to the cleavers which are basically the same kind of straps of cloth that are being like the one on the arm that's being painted right now i actually was a little surprised to see that they didn't have it just continue downwards to the ones that are currently being painted and then the cleavers are pretty much identical funny note for those of whom that don't haven't seen the game itself or the items from it the cleavers are very identical in obviously stats but also an image except for one thing they're flipped and they're still unique items you can only have one each and it's basically a left cleaver and a right cleaver uh because they can be used together paired is not a, a dual wielding is not a common thing in the game so i had forgotten there are a few other spots that get painted uh as strips of cloth and yeah that's got to be the, my mid-range gray um then on to my mid-range metal, uh, like iron metallic. Uh, I use this for a lot of chain mail or highlights on the darker color. But I use this on metals that I don't want to look finely polished, but also look like they've been a little bit better processed. Like I would use this on a very clear um, steel item as opposed to just... I want this to look like iron or I want this to look like worn steel. Uh, and here's me catching up on a couple of brown areas that I had forgotten about. Because his actual belt, the one below the face belt, which is held on with a belt as well, just belts and hooks, is what I'm currently painting. As well as the sack that's hanging off of his waist, the handle of the uh, hacksaw or bone saw, whatever it is. It's definitely a saw, not another cleaver. Which I was really surprised to see. To my knowledge, that does not get used in combat. Like, he's got all this stuff on him. Um, hell, to my knowledge, the lanterns on his back still become relevant. And I know the face on his um, helmet, or the, the jawbone on his helmet gets made relevant. But that's not the point. Ooh. So. Looks like I'm painting on some more. Yeah, I'm painting on some more gray, touching up some things. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the cloths on the side that are blatantly holding the top and bottom of that um, pig-like jaw together. And that's the entire base coat. So, on to the ink wash. Now, the ink wash is, as per usual, black. Uh, I need to start getting more washes um, for other things. But right now, I really don't care when working on these monsters because I still want them to look kind of dark. I'm going to need them for... Honestly, the survivors and bare flesh and stuff like that. And my opinion of this model, more than any other, was before I got to the ink wash that you're seeing now, which was a massive improvement, because I'm kidding, because uh, to my point I was about to make, this model looked like it was made of Play-Doh when the base coat was done, even after all the touch-ups. It looked horribly like Play-Doh beforehand. Um... As I said earlier in the video, this model needed a lot of touch-ups. I think I had to redo a couple of the lanterns and a few other things, and it was just really crazy and time-consuming. It took me, I think, a week of um, various sit-downs to actually get this model looking right and ready for the inking. But the inking ended up really good because it gets into all the fur, the various chainmail parts, the skulls, the bones. So here we are on to the highlights. I'm using my mid-range uh, metallic for highlighting the armor, starting with the boots, and obviously we'll move up through the model. 
Um, now, I don't mind that I end up basically making the fur look like it's covered in metal, because I'll get back over that with uh, the actual tan color that I used to highlight brown. And that's pretty much how, for those of you that haven't seen my videos in the past, that's pretty much how I work with highlights. I just kind of messy in areas I haven't done yet, knowing full well that I'm going to get back to them with other stuff. Like, right now, using white on various things, like the gray, the bones. That's pretty much it, actually. At least I think this is white. This could be silver. Now, this is me using the uh, darker metallic that the armor is in the first place, covering the black bits for the uh, lanterns, because I still want them to look black, but metallic, as well as, you saw to begin with, the actual um, cleavers themselves. I believe this is me highlighting the lanterns in yellow. I wanted to do a light amount of yellow to begin with, uh, but I'll do more you'll see later for a glow effect. And then here's the tan, which really makes this just pop and shine, like in terms of detail. It, it's a little sloppy on camera, but in person it looks tremendously better because of this. Um, honestly, the, the model would it was a mess before this. Uh, the highlights all help and everything. Uh, the, and the inking coat. Like, this was definitely a model, like I said, it looked like putty beforehand, and had the greatest level of aesthetic transformation from the ink wash and highlight. So, there's the highlight of the mask, which, now I remember, I highlighted the mask in tan. I don't remember what I base coated it in, though. Uh, I believe some darker flesh. And then, yeah, here's me going over the flesh itself, and uh, double-checking some of the metal. Then the pants, which is being done in my off-white gray, I believe. Either that or is being done in my mid-range gray. Which, regardless, I know that's what's being used on the base right now. Uh, this is actually the same effect for the bases that I use when it's uh, stone faces. It, it, it just coincidental, but it's all... Uh, well, no, not really. It's the reason I chose the coloration, or the, the color palette... Uh, for these models to be uh, standing on gray stone surface like things. Uh, the black ring around the base, that's just something I do. Uh, I've done it since uh, Imperial Salt models. And kind of did it a lot with early 40k models. <laughs> like, years and years ago. So here's the actual lantern glows getting painted on. Uh, I'm going very heavy on the yellow. I think this might be me actually doing the lanterns themselves, not the surrounding areas, because I don't remember if I decided whether or not I was going with an orange glow or a yellow glow. Usually what I do is I do a glow similar to the color that I used for the base coat of the light source. And that generally, or at least is the closer part, and then having the farther out. Yeah, I'm, I am actually doing that here. I'm dry brushing the rest orange. I know lighting will be something I will be experimenting with a lot with the Gorm. Uh, for those of you that aren't aware of what the Gorm is, I'm not going to go into full detail. You can look it up, but it has an anglerfish-like bulb. <laughs> it's an amalgamy of a lot of things, like it makes a platypus look normal. Not that they aren't just... They still do look like a hodgepodge. And a couple other things, but mostly lantern uh, lighting from here. And that's the entire model, folks. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Sorry this was a longer one, but <laughs> heads up, the next one's even longer with the Phoenix. Um, if you did enjoy, feel for, uh, please press the like button. If you think somebody else will enjoy this, feel free to share the video. If you didn't enjoy it, go ahead and press that dislike button, but please leave a constructive comment as to why. I know I'm more rambly in this, but that's because it's a long, drawn-out video, and if you feel that's the reason that you don't like it, go ahead and then tell me that. Um, still debating putting in some background music. Ideas would be nice. Um, also, if you feel like commenting in general, feel free to do so. And if you want to see more like this, be it more painting videos, more board game overview videos, or uh, my Let's Plays, as I'm trying to get some more of those, 
feel free to subscribe. Regardless, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.